Welcome to the Let's Eat Grandma to the Job Seekers Podcast. Podcast. All right, welcome to the 16th episode of the LEG Job Seekers Podcast. We're going to talk about how you can build a winning networking strategy in your job search. First of all, some crazy statistics about networking. There was a 3,000 person study published by Lou Adler and LinkedIn that claimed that 85% of critical jobs were filled by networking of some sort. And often before jobs are even posted, they are already filled internally or through a referral. Guys, this is such a mind blowing statistic and really should speak to why you need to up your networking game right now. So it's no wonder why you need to stop spending so much time online and actually get out there and start making the magic happen. And dare I say it, many of you are either doing it incorrectly or not to its fullest potential. So this episode, we're going to go straight to the horse's mouth and speak with the networking master himself, Al Robinette, who is a respected career coach here in Texas and has been through it all. We're going to talk about the role LinkedIn should have in your networking game, and we're going to start talking about the good sources in which you can start to find the right people to funnel into your life. Guys, I just want to give a quick reminder, if you haven't already subscribed to us on iTunes, go ahead and do that right now. Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, whatever you use to listen to your favorite podcasts. This is the LEG Job Seekers Podcast. We have some really amazing content coming up in the future, as always, and you're not going to want to miss it. All right, it's time to get right to it. Without further ado, here's Al Robinette on how to build a winning networking strategy. Al, welcome back to the Let's Eat Grandma Job Seekers podcast. It's great to have you back on today. Hey, Chris. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to it. Yeah, it's. Uh, I was like, we could not not have Al back. <laughs> Just uh, such a great presenter. And um, yeah, we have some really amazing insights coming for networking, which is going to be that hot topic for today. So uh, for those of you who did not listen to our last podcast with Al, uh, we'll kind of give a quick um, kind of reminder of his background Um, So, Al, if you can just quickly just remind readers about your background and how you got involved in helping people with their career. No, absolutely. Um, Well, uh, my background has worked everything from boots on the ground to corporate level positions in my career. Uh, But my passion has been uh, IO psychology, which is industrial organizational psychology, uh, along with being certified in behavioral sciences, professional career coach and all these other great initials that they give you for your name. It's a lot of initials. Um, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of initials. It's, it's so impressive. <laughs> um, so, But all that is really just to say I, I get into this to find the ability and skills and develop myself enough to be able to help others. Um, as someone that has been through a lot of uh, organizational changes, downsizing, workforce reductions, and all the different things that happen in the corporate world, um, I decided that I wanted to help people plan for that, to understand that, how to avoid it. Um, and just have people uh-huh. find the right fit careers for themselves. Because, um, again, I think everybody at some point worked in a job that they didn't enjoy doing. Um, yep. And there's ways that we can avoid that and we can help people find the right fit. It's not necessarily about getting the job. It's about getting yep. the right job. I absolutely agree with that. And, yeah, you would, you're would you not only doing the company a disservice. It's like you're doing yourself a disservice because you're not going to be as active and motivated to do a great job. And uh, for those of you who, who are listening to this right now, I would check out our last podcast. It's, it's about layoffs and how to kind of stay proactive. And um, we touch upon you know, this, this concept and it's like you don't want to kind of scramble to, to give yourself the solution about what happens when you're laid off. It's like, no, you want to you be proactive so that way when it does happen, you know, when that time does come, that you are prepared. So absolutely. And, and that's and everything about our careers. Uh, for most people, I'd probably say seven out of 10 people um, don't manage their careers until crisis hits. Mm. And that's when it's already too late. And you're probably nine months behind the eight ball already. Exactly. Um, so, you know, professional career is about managing your career every day. It's about building resources and, and our topic today, networking and, um, yep. you know, having yourself just in a position that, you know, if something happens, you're going to be okay. Or yep. if that right opportunity comes along, you've built those connections and you've built those those uh, relationships to take advantage of that next step in your career. So it doesn't always have to be a negative. Um, you know, the networking aspect can be a big, huge positive as well. It's not just when tragedy happens. It's exactly. about getting to that next level. 
Exactly. And a great preview of what's to come in this podcast. But kind of before I launch into it, uh, this is, gosh, the word networking already is, is it's so overused and has been overused for such a long time. Um, so I just, let's define networking first. How would you define networking in the context of what we're going to be talking in this podcast? You know, that's a great question. And I, I completely agree with you it is the term networking used to be a really great term and then it's gotten chopped up and used in probably 50 different ways now. Everything from, you know, uh, multi-level marketing networking to social networking to, you know, um, charity network, like just all kinds of networking. That term has been used all over, um, yeah. you know, and I, t- I tend to think about getting away from the term networking and just focusing on just a genuine human connection with people and enjoying enjoying um, the diversity of thought and experience that you get by by connecting with people on a real level. Um, and, and when you when you do that, th- that type of networking, if we're going to call it, um it becomes it makes a difference for both you and the person you're connecting with. Yep. So and I think most of the clients I have and people I talk to when we mention the networking uh, or professional branding, which it can also be called, it's about getting yourself out there, getting people to know who you are professionally. Um, they immediately tend to think of LinkedIn. And that is probably one of the most common places people think of for connecting with other professionals, um, which is the purpose of the site. But there's different types of it because you have the external networking, which is going to be your uh, LinkedIn's, your um, uh, after work uh, social networking uh, type things, the dinners and different things. But then there's also an internal networking. And that's where you network within your own organization. So it's finding those people that work for your company that can be the mentor or the person that can be your sounding board or your creative muse that you can uh, have great relationships with and bounce things off of each other and both of you benefit from that relationship. Um, so th- those are two of the most common ones we see out there um, that people don't always think about where they are, they think about where they're going sometimes. And there's some amazing resources within their own organizations. Exactly. And yeah, I think if people can just kind of like broaden kind of their their sense of the word networking, because like a lot of the times when people hear networking, they're just like, oh, just. Uh, attending a career fair and handing out as many resumes as I possibly can <laughs> to try to get a job. Yeah. And uh, it, it's funny because like today, like earlier this morning, I attended a career fair myself just to because I, I like to kind of put myself in the perspective in the shoes of my job seekers. But um, I saw kind of, you know, what it could feel and look like if you were just that person just, you know, going for some sort of outcome and that's all you want versus actually trying to build a genuine human connection. No, yeah. abso- absolutely. And, you know, when we're talking about, you know, what, what does it mean to network with somebody? So let's break it down a little further. Mm. So I need something. So let me go meet some people and see if they can help me. That is not networking. <laughs> um, I lost my job. Let me go out and send out a billion emails and, a, and, and LinkedIn invites and say, hey, can you help me get a job? Can you help me get into your company? That's yeah. not networking. That's begging. That's desperation. Okay. Um, that, that's not what the, its purpose is. The purpose is to have mutual benefit from the human relationship. Okay. So, and in that means there's a lot of people on LinkedIn that have 10, 15, 20, 30,000 connections. And, and for some people that might be the right way to go because of their particular niche or industry though, they want to be an influencer of people and that, that might be great. Yeah. But for the average professional, you don't need that many. It becomes very noisy uh, on LinkedIn for them. You get so sure. many updates that you don't know what to do with it. And most people just disengage then and they don't even continue following their own LinkedIn profiles. Um, sure. And some of my clients have had the most success with networks that were less than 500 people. Wow. And so like, I'll kind of cut in right there. It's like, Al, I know like you are a very well-connected person. Like you, you have about, what is it? Like 9,000 yeah. connections on LinkedIn. So, um, but you're you're in a a different position. You're somebody who's wanting to connect with all sorts of different people in different industries, Mm -hmm. but, um, let's kind of break it down. So if you're just your average job seeker in a specific field, you know, is there any particular type of quality number that you would try to strive for? You know, maybe on LinkedIn. Yeah, it's, it's a great question. It's not about quantity. It's about quality. How -hmm. much time can you commit to building these relationships and, what do the relationships offer you and you offer them? So, for example, 
Um, if I have a client that is interested in being a dental assistant, I'm going to uh, encourage them to connect with dentists and dental hygienists and dental office managers and dental assistants. So we want them to stick to that industry as best we can. Now, that doesn't mean there's not people in other industries that could be valuable and they could learn from and be lots of great resource, but we need to channel and, and, and focus their energy because everybody's busy and we have a limited amount of time for things in our lives. Mm -hmm. So we want to channel that to make sure it's most productive. So those are people that that, per, that client would immediately have something in common with. They're able to share what they've learned going through their schooling. They're able to, sh to connect with people. They can comment on their posts. They can share you know, uh, industry knowledge that they have. And they're helping them stay up to speed on what's happening in their own industry. And then over time, yes, that could generate into job offers. Um, yes. You know, I, I will tell you throughout my career, half of my jobs that uh, I was recruited for came from LinkedIn where they found me. Uh, and it wasn't even me finding them. That's amazing. Um, and I, I don't know what you're you're able to kind of disclose here, but do you have any uh, specific stories, like success stories from your past of LinkedIn? Because I'm sure we would have a lot of guests wanting to hear that. Um, success stories from the past. God, there's, there's And awkward <laughs> stories, too. We want to hear the weird ones, too. Well, <laughs> you know, I, I definitely, the, the success stories has definitely been, um, I had a gentleman that was a client that um, was a dentist. And he'd owned his own practice for over 20 years and decided to close his practice. And he didn't have a plan before he closed it. Yeah. Um, so he called me in a bit of a desperation. He was trying to get a job. He couldn't even get a job at the local QT convenience store. I, and this is somebody that's a doctor in dentistry and had multiple degrees, spoke four languages, uh, all this. But they wouldn't hire him. So when he and I started working together, I, he had not even done a whole lot on LinkedIn, which I thought was actually good because he hadn't done any damage. <laughs> um, so we started targeting his LinkedIn to focus on people that was in a core industry he needed to be in. So he didn't want to be in dentistry, but he had skill sets that are still valuable in other industries. So we started helping him connect with people that did dental consulting for people starting a dental practice and also, um, dental uh, pathology, which it gets a little creepy stuff. Uh, dealing with dental records and, and helping identify people. <laughs> okay, um, that makes sense. He, he had an interest in it. So we started targeting those people on LinkedIn for him. And we helped him come up with ways to communicate with those individuals. It was not necessarily copy and paste generic to everybody, but he was personalizing it and we were helping him make some genuine connections. And it took probably about eight weeks. And he finally connected with somebody that was interested in hiring him, interviewed him. And took probably about th three or four weeks to go through that process, and he got hired. So it took about ninety days oh, uh, wow. for him. Now, how did he, how did he meet that person? It was through LinkedIn. We were just targeting those job titles. So on LinkedIn, you can search for a specific person, a specific title, a specific company. Um, you can really narrow wow. your search of who you want to connect with. Um, and if you're wow. and if you don't have a paid account on LinkedIn, it's definitely worth the sixty bucks a month to do that. Yeah, because um, that way you can send a message to somebody even if you're not connected with them um, yeah. and get to know people. But it took about 90 days for him to, to get him get a great job that he loved. He's still in now almost two years later. Yeah. The big thing, though, is that, you know, that's I have to do the legal thing that, you know, results are not typical. Everybody's going to be different. <laughs> uh, you can't guarantee sure. you get a job in, in 90 days doing sure, this. Sure. But, um, but it was a great story for him. Um, yeah. Well, you, you said already just two amazing things right off the bat that I think people can take away just already. And the first is the fact that he was targeted, right? Mm -hmm. He didn't just go on Indeed or ZipRecruiter or whatever and just start spraying his resume out into the yep. world. It's like, no, he said, you know, this is a, a specific type of person that I want to look for. And, um, and then actually had a tool, which is LinkedIn. I think LinkedIn is, is one of the best tools on, in the online world, if not the best tool online to help yourself be targeted in your job search. Mm -hmm. So he said, I'm looking for a specific type of person and was able to find that. Yeah. And the second thing, I know you said, you know, results aren't typical 90 days, but I, I think even for a lot of people listening, sometimes 90 days seems like a long time. Yep. So I think people need to get in more of the long-term game mindset rather than, you know, I need to get a job next week or mm -hmm. I need to find something the week after that. You know, yeah. sometimes it just takes time. Well, absolutely. And, and in 90 days is an eternity if you're if you were unexpectedly out of work and you're trying to find something. So but that's why yes. I continue to go back and I, I encourage people 
to be proactive about your career and make these connections now. So yes. 9, 10, 12, 18, 24 months from now, if something comes available, a great opportunity, somebody's going to know you or remember you from your network and potentially reach out to you. So when we talk about these connections, it's it's also not about just getting someone to accept and say, okay, well, i got 345 people. You know, It's not just about that. It's about following the updates that you see in LinkedIn. Each day logging mm-hmm. in, who's having a birthday? Can you say something nice to that person for their birthday? And it's not just because you're trying to get something. It's being human and being genuine. And Because I can't imagine you wouldn't want to wish somebody yeah. a happy birthday. I mean, it's nice. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, somebody gets a promotion. Somebody gets uh, a new job or something. There's lots of great positive human social change that we can make through that, that genuine networking. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and then when people are posting something, you know, it's going out and commenting on that. You yes. know, did you see a cool post or video or an infographic somebody did and you really enjoyed it? Great. Did you comment? So many people walk away from those and don't even comment. So the person who posted it has no idea they've made a positive impact on somebody. So why not give them, give them that and let them know, hey, I really appreciated sharing that. I took away a couple of great nuggets from it. Yes. Um, so that's part of that, that true social engagement uh, in a professional way. Yeah. And, and, like I'll, we had a conversation earlier about networking. I think we're kind of alluding to it now. But what what was it? The phrase or word that you were using to replace networking, the most oh, overused buzzword. Gen, oh, it's genuine human connection. Genuine I mean, human connection. Yeah, yeah. So the, I think that's exactly what you are touching upon right now. It's like that genuine human connection. It's like that should that should just replace the word networking. You know, this is mm-hmm. that's you know such an incredible incredible concepts. And I think if people are more like that and less like, you know, Hey, I'd love to connect some time so I could, you know, get an interview or whatever. I think people will be a lot more effective. So I agree. And while you're there, I'm going to go ahead and throw this out there. Um, if you decide you're going to go out and start to truly nurture and grow your network. And I love using those phrases because I think of my, my network and LinkedIn is like a garden. Um, you know, you start out, you got to till up the ground, you got to break it all up and you got to plant your seeds and that's getting those initial introductions and meeting people. And then, but then you got to water it, right? You got to nurture it and you got to give it nutrients. So that's following up and commenting and posting and checking in with people. Wow. But, if, if, but if you ignore your garden, it's going to die, you know? So it takes a little wow. effort to maintain this. Um, I love that metaphor. Yeah, it really That's is. incredible. Um, but as you do that, please don't do this. I can't tell you how many times I've seen posts that exceed 400 comments on LinkedIn about this topic. If you reach out to connect with somebody and they accept you and your very first email is, I want to sell you something. I want to introduce you to something. Can you get me a job? And you're asking for something in your very first communication, you're going to get unconnected and you're done. Okay. I'm just, yeah. I'm going to put it out there. And so yeah. many people do that, you know, and that's not about For making sure. a genuine connection when you do it that way. For sure. Um, it's about taking time and getting to know that other person. Um, For sure. And, and I kind of, this is a perfect segue into kind of the best practice networking techniques or genuine human connection techniques, we'll call it. But um, what would you recommend to replace that um, sales ask, you know, that immediate pitch in the first message what kind of message do you foresee being effective when you're you know essentially reaching out to strangers and, and mm-hmm. starting to build connections i'll give you a perfect example i connected uh with uh someone yesterday um for the first time um her name is lynn england um i met her on uh on linkedin she found my profile and reached out and connected and my first response back to her after connecting was hey thanks for connecting you know i love connecting with other professionals especially in the, her industry and I said, I'm, I would love to hear more about what you do. Um, and she's absolutely was up for it. We ended up talking that afternoon by phone and we talked for a good hour and a half uh, about her work and what she did. And we talked about what I did and then immediately almost became a collaboration of how could we help each other? Sure. You know, is there people sure. I can refer to her? Is there a way I can help support her and her business? Uh, and the same thing for me, even though we're in different parts of the country. She's in North Carolina. I'm in Texas. Wow. Um, so it, it, and the initial conversation was uh, uh, LinkedIn, you said? Yeah, messaging? LinkedIn. She just reached out and yeah. wanted to connect on LinkedIn. So that message back was about, you know, hey, love to connect and learn more about what you do. And that's all Fantastic. It was. You know, I wasn't asking for anything. I wasn't expecting anything. And neither was she. 
So that became an organic human connection. And I got to know her. I got to know about her kids, you know, and uh, I just got to have a really great connection with somebody. <laughs> I think um, half the people listening to this podcast or I, I'm, I'm basing this off of a lot of the people I talk to, but need to hit rewind and listen to this section of this episode three, four more times because that's the point to hammer home. It's like, that's how you're going to end up getting those jobs. That's how you're going to end up, you know, building this really awesome, fruitful, um, you know, relationships with other people that can lead to anything, you mm -hmm. know? So absolutely. And I think yeah. when we, when we look at connecting with people and doing it for a purpose for furthering your career, I, I don't want to say there's anything wrong with that and connecting with people with intention. Uh, sure. Cause that's what we're doing when we're targeting specific industries or job titles, we're being intentional on who we connect with. Mm -hmm. It's how we engage those individuals and how we spend that time with those individuals that makes a difference, whether it's uh, something f I'm doing it out of um, greed or if I'm doing it out sure. of wanting to make a true connection. And when we look at our careers and where we want to go, professional branding is something that's missed very heavily by a lot of people. Regardless of whether you think you have one or not, everybody has a professional brand of who you are. What's your personal brand? If you go out and Google your name, that's who you are at that moment. So sure. <laughs> your Facebook posts out there, you know, somebody standing up on a side down doing drinking from a keg at a party in college or something. Yeah, that's man. out there, you know, um, you know, whatever. <laughs> your... Yeah, whatever it is, it is out there. So always remember you do have that. And as you connect with people on LinkedIn or local social networking sites or other ways that you connect with professionals, everything that you put out there is part of that professional branding. People remember who you are. And that's part of what it is. You need people to know you. And if you think about how many billions of people are on the globe today, because LinkedIn's global, people from every country around the world are on it. They don't know who you are. I, here I am in Dallas, Texas, which is a huge metropolitan area, but nobody in the UK knows who I am. So as you're out there and you're making these connections, it's about getting people to know who you are. What do you bring to the table? Um, you know, why do I want to connect with you? What is it? What's the value of us having a relationship, a professional relationship and, and, and communicating? So, you know, make sure we bring things to the table and, you know, think about what those relationships are. Because if you go in and you're going in for a specific purpose and you're just take, 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 and you're ask, 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 word gets around. People start talking and, and when suddenly a job comes up and you want to go work for that company, who knows who that person is making the hiring decisions, somebody that you burned a bridge with previously. Yeah. Um, so we always want to make sure we have positive intent and those human connections. Absolutely. And it really is a mindset thing. It's, it's, it's really, I think a strategy that everyone should be starting to hone in right now in their minds, even if they're listening to this right now and they don't have a job, it's like, you know, start to get yourself in, in, you know, kind of the attitude of building those connections and, even, you know, we talked about internal versus external networking, I think, especially putting emphasis on your internal network as well. Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely. I mean, every every organization has got amazing talent out there and it's finding the person you can connect with internally. So it mm -hmm. could be a mentor, somebody that can guide you through the career journey in that organization. How do you move through the organization? How do you get into your ideal position there? Um, you know, finding that person who's willing to, to mentor you or spend time with you uh, is part of that. Um, it's mm -hmm. also making those connections with your coworkers and peers and what can you learn from each other. And, and what's difficult about the internal networking is it requires a certain level of vulnerability, which yeah. most people think is a weakness in the business world. Um, but if you're able to show a little bit of vulnerability and be humble, um, that's a huge leadership trait that I think is a positive for most people. Um, because it makes you human and makes people want to help you. So I think when you're able to do those and make those kinds of connections with your peers, it increases the overall team performance because you all are connecting on that human level. Uh, so in addition to the networking benefit to you, you're actually helping the entire organization because you're connecting as a team better. Perfect. All right, Alice, so we talked about uh, LinkedIn was a, actually a really great tool that I think a lot of job seekers should have in their back pocket. But um, what are some other events or ways that people can get out in front of those people and start building relationships? There's so many different uh, avenues to pursue. Uh, like I said, I know we've talked a lot about LinkedIn because it's probably the most common. Everybody can easily recognize. Easy, yeah. When you think about other places, uh, once you leave college, you're an alumni if you graduate. And so many people forget about their alumni resources. 
And just about every university I've ever worked with or my clients have worked with have some type of career services or networking events where they have um, resources to help you connect with other individuals that are alumni as well. So a lot of them will have Facebook pages and things set up that's just for alumni of that university. Um, and you're able to you know, reach out to say, hey, I'm, I'm reaching out to my network. I'm interested in this particular career field. If anybody has any advice or suggestions, I'd love to hear. So you're asking for advice how you can pursue your career goals, not for someone to do it for you or someone to give you a break. Um, right. Because it's your responsibility to manage your career. But there's nothing wrong with asking for somebody to give you some insights, input or tips. Uh, and that comes across very professionally when you didn't do it that way. So that's another option that I think is is forgotten very frequently. Right. It's like the alumni resource. And, you know, that you bring a good point. I forget about mine all the time. And even just thinking right now, there actually is a, um, a I went to Cornell. So like a Cornell in Austin um, meetup group that mm-hmm. meets once or twice a month yep. and um, I just attended a, uh, a meetup just last month and just where I was able to meet so many cool people and we you know share the common bond of going through the same thing those are not like you attend those events you know just for the job opportunities but they're there man they're they're even stronger and better than ever than just going and then applying randomly to some job posting. So. Absolutely. Meetup groups are another great area that you can connect with people that are like-minded or similar mm-hmm. high interests that you can uh, connect with. But something you just said really hit on an important one. You mentioned about that, that uh, mutual experience um, right there and people that share a common bond or a common um, experience tend to connect together very quickly and easily. And yes. that's where one of the biggest opportunities out there is in the military. Uh, there's okay. a lot of networking opportunities out there for the military groups, no matter what branch you've been in, no matter what, what your service has been, your MOS or any of it. There, I guarantee you, almost every small town somewhere has some type of event that's for military and military veterans active in and retired to get together to network for professional purposes. Um, right. And some of the military branches do even have some uh, uh, sources to help with that as well uh, when people are transitioning out. So that's another opportunity to connect there. There is uh, different uh, corporations out there that will do internship programs for the military transitioning. Um, so there, there's definitely some cool stuff out there. But military is its own demographic of amazing people that all have this brotherhood, sisterhood to pull together and help each other. Uh, so anybody that's got military background uh, and experience, mm-hmm. you know, don't forget to, to tap into your family. Exactly. So, yeah, we already touched upon and people should be writing this down, just a bunch of different ways that people could go out and get jobs. So we talked about LinkedIn first and foremost. We talked about using your alumni network, we talked about going to specific events or just any any specific group that you're a part of that you've gone through the same thing. You know, you've you've experienced the same things and even possibly gone through the same struggles. It's like, you know, you want to help those people, you want to help those people out. So those are other good opportunities. Um, the, Al, anything else you can think that comes to mind is yeah, a great opportunity. There's only one other one I would throw out. That's a really big miss. Uh, I think often that clients have an aha moment when I bring up and that is the professional, um, chapters. So if you are a CPA or if you're an attorney or um, a psychologist or any kind of other uh, type of professional field, almost all of them have local chapters uh, and they meet up and get together. So, for example, the certified for forensic interview um, examiners that work in the banking field looking for fraud, CFEs, there's seven or eight chapters, I think, in the in the North Texas area. And these are all people doing the exact same work. They're all doing in the same field, but they work for all kinds of different organizations and companies. So the ability to join one of those chapters, depending on which one it is, are usually not too expensive. And then the money is well worth joining the chapters to stay up on current events that are happening in your career industry. You're able to connect with professionals that have been doing it for anywhere from a year to probably 20 or 30 years in some of the organizations and gain an amazing amount of a diversity of knowledge and experience that can be shared with you when you attend those. Um, And again, when opportunities come up, a lot of companies offer referral bonuses if they have a position that needs to be filled and an employee refers somebody that's hired. So who are they gonna go to? Well, I'm gonna go to my chapter people because I already know what they do, I already know their skill sets, and I can recommend them. So it's a great one that a lot of people tend to miss out because they've never joined a local chapter for their industry. Excellent. 
yeah, I'm trying to think of right now for for resume writers. There's there's a national chapter, but I should I should probably do my own homework and digging to see where I can find. So yep, especially in I Austin. Found... I'm sure you got something in Austin. <laughs> I mean, in a way, I feel like that's how I met you, right? Because yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we were part of the same organization um, to help our clients out. And so I was looking personally through um, that list. and I was like, you know, who would have the same goal? And you're in close proximity to you're just you're right over in Dallas. Yep. So um, then the conversation between Anna, Al and I started, you know, we had email back and forth, phone conversations. And, you know, here we are doing podcasts and, and partnering up together. So um, can't preach that enough. It's yeah, so it's true. a real, real life example of, you know, how yeah. those organizations can connect people. And so before we kind of launch into, I want to talk about kind of the homework and prep that comes to attending network events. But you talk about like when you're, when you're helping your clients find jobs, what do you tell them when they say, you know, how much time should be devoted between kind of spending my time online versus going out there and and physically attending events? That, that is a million dollar question that gets asked. uh, Probably every single client will ask that question in one way, shape or form. Yeah. Um, I think one of the things that takes me into answering that question depends on, are you more of an introvert or an extrovert um, mm-hmm. in your in your behavior style? Um, mm-hmm. People who are more introverted and less social will tend to want to spend more time online, and that's okay. Uh, that's where they're comfortable. Uh, sure. And I would still encourage to have some FaceTime and find some events that they could attend because uh, it's great conversation that they have. It's practice for interviews. Sometimes there's interviews on the spot. So it's still good to attend some uh, of those events. But those that are extroverts, um, they're not going to typically want to spend a lot of time online. So they're going to spend more going to actual events. So I think it's healthy to have a balance of both. Uh, It just depends on what fits your personality style. If you're a salesperson, you've got to go in person because you've got to sell yourself and you've got to see that dynamic uh, charisma that you're bringing to the table to talk to people. That doesn't come across in an email quite as easy. I love that you said that. Yeah, I feel like... I'm a natural. I mean, I took my uh, my test, my MBTI test. I'm an extrovert. However, you know, depends on uh, kind of my my mood that day. But I, <laughs> I I generally try to shift towards attending events as much as possible because it's it's more fun for me that way. So well, and I think your your geography makes a difference too because depending on where you are in the world and sure. where you are in the country here in the U.S., um, you may not have events close by, so you may have to do more online. Uh, mm-hmm. so that's going to, that's going to play a big part, uh, and, and how you're going to network and connect. And that's where things like zoom and Skype sessions and Facebook, um, you know, video chats all start to come in to help you connect with people uh, sure. in a real way as well. Sure. Let's kind of go back to something you said. Let's talk about the introvert here or not, ne- not even necessarily the introvert, but somebody who's, who is just predisposed to not want to network, you know, maybe a shy person, mm-hmm. but, um, you, what are some helpful tips for folks who are just like I said, predisposed to not want to network? Mm-hmm. Um, well, typically that when, when a client tells me that my first question is why, what is it that we're fearful of? What is it we're concerned about? Uh, Cause we got to understand what that is first before we can help figure out a solution. And a good percentage of people are afraid of going out and doing it in person is they're worried they're going to, say something wrong or they're not going to have anything to talk about or um, they're going to come across the wrong way and they're going to hurt their their people's perceptions of them. Okay. So those we tend to find it's more about just educating a little bit. So if you're going to an upcoming event like here in North Texas, they have um, uh, the work after dark uh, events they do up here. Uh, It's usually at a local restaurant or, you know, professional bar setting. It's not anything, you know, like a club or something. And uh, the professionals all get there for about a three hour window and everybody hangs out and talks and networks. So, you know, something like that was where you could talk to the people who are putting the event on and ask, what are some of the the types of people that come to these events? What industries are they from? Because even if they're from industries that aren't yours, that gives you a little bit of time to do your research, learn something about that industry. So you have something to talk about when you're there. Um, You know, you're not trying to portray yourself as an expert but you're having a common topic to start the discussion. And you can ask uh, that person, hey, I understand in your industry um, this is this is going on or this is something that's unique to your industry. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, you know, and it, it's an easy, open icebreaker to start those conversations. Uh, I would say the other thing is, is depending on what they're fearful of, um, 
Just the knowledge is the biggest thing is just getting a little bit of knowledge of, of where you're going, who you're talking to, and, and be prepared to talk about, you know, other topics than just yourself. That's probably the biggest one. Uh, the One of the best courses I recommend people take if they can take it, and if you can't take it, at least get the uh, the book or the audio book for it is the Dale Carnegie, how to win friends and influence people. I was just going to talk about that is so funny. Yeah. Um, I yeah. went through that back in the mid to late nineties. Um, mm-hmm. and it was an amazing program and I still remember it to this day. There is a process and I'm sure they still teach it and there's other people that teach it, but it's a visualization on what topics to talk to somebody about your meeting for the first time. Mm-hmm. And it's an easy way to remember. So if I was meeting you for the first time, I don't know what to talk to you about. So they teach you to do this visualization where you think about this big fancy house and this big Georgia mansion and it has these beautiful white pillars and you do this very descriptive description of it. And then there's um, you know a chimney on the top and there's a hand coming out of the chimney with a work glove on it and and you go through this series of images and each image is a topic. We talk about where are you from? We talk about the work glove. What do you do for a living? Um, the gloves holding a baby. So do you have kids? There's an airplane flying above. Do you do a lot of traveling? Uh, the airplane has tennis rackets wow. for propellers. So do you enjoy sports? So these are great visualizations that they teach in that program to give you easy topics to start a conversation with a stranger that are safe topics. That is such a good point. It's, it's funny. Like I was about to kind of um, also bring up another point uh, from how to win friends and influence people. It's like do you remember what, what it was like a story um, about? I think it was Teddy Roosevelt who would kind of do research on, you know, certain interests um, that a person may have. And he would get on that topic, you know, get on the level of that topic. And even if it was something that you necessarily may not, you know, have this crazy passion for, but maybe you do have a curiosity to kind of find out more about that. Mm-hmm. So, you know, Al, if I find out that you like golf, you know, we talk about, you know, I can see what I can learn about mm-hmm. you, you know, about golf and talk about that. So absolutely. And that is making a genuine human connection because mm-hmm. when you're doing it with positive intention, you genuinely want to get to know that person better. That's positive intent. But when you're doing it to manipulate somebody, that's not positive intent. And that's going to be a relationship that blows up on you. Um, okay. So always it all doing comes down to your motive. Absolutely. Positive yeah. intent and having that real connection. And mm-hmm. again, you don't have to become an expert and know everything that person loves. So don't get creepy and go out and do a background check and social stalk somebody. Um, but, you know, it's <laughs> it's good just to get to know people and just have real conversation. True. Excellent. I love that. Um, and so I th- we already hit kind of a little bit about this, but the, the preparation that goes before an event. So say, you know, I'm about to about to go to an alumni event right now to meet some people and, you know, potentially make some connections. Um, what preparation, if any, do you think should go before that event and possibly after? Uh, preparation, if it's a if it's just a gathering or a social gathering of alumni, um, there's not a huge amount of prep I'd say to do for that because you're not necessarily taking your resume with you if it's just a social event. Uh, but if it's a, a professional networking event, then I would make sure you have copies of your resume with you uh, for that. But if it's just a gathering event, uh, I would take some time just to kind of refresh on you know who some of your peers that are that might be there. Um, mm-hmm. You know, have you reached out to some of the people that you went to school with? Are they going to be there? Uh, and just kind of refresh yourself. Um, probably update a little bit on some of the things that are going on at the school. You know, what's been happening since you were there last. Uh, those are all great safe topics. Is hey, you know, I was talking sure. to you the other day, I heard the school's doing ABC. Uh, sure. And again, those are great icebreaker conversation topics that are safe um, sure. and can make somebody feel more comfortable who is, is maybe socially uh, struggles uh, in those situations. That's great. This is this seems like a simple question, but I'm, I'm sure it's something that a lot of people get tripped up. But, you know, say I do end up making a connection with somebody, say I have a conversation with you at this networking event. You say, hey, let's connect. Um, and, you know, we had a conversation about our industry, our career. What's the best way to follow up if somebody says, let's connect? I'm going to give you my email, my 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 uh, LinkedIn or something like that. Um, so if you and I met at a networking event, we had a good time, we talked, um, and then uh, you said, hey, here's my email address, let's stay connected, i give you mine. So typically what I would do would be usually um, the next day, uh, I would send an email and just thanking you for your time, getting to know you, because uh, I'm assuming since we're connecting, I did enjoy my time sure. uh, talking with you and we had some things in common. Um, you no, know, we both have very busy schedules and I'd want to you know, see what, when you might have some time to connect, I'd like to continue our discussion. Um, you know, and just continuing that dialogue, very simple. 
And guys, notice how Al didn't say, um, can I have a job? <laughs> <laughs> right away or yeah. do you have any any sort of way that i could find a job can and, you vouch I don't, for me that's the other one i always hear people do hey I need, i'm calling for a job at your company yeah. can you vouch for me we're i mean when guys we're not saying not to like there is a time and a place to yes. ask you know if there are opportunities out there absolutely there's a, definitely a right way to do it and there's a wrong way to do it and we're having some fun yeah. about some of the wrong ways that are very common and if anybody listening is on one done it i apologize we're not making fun of you it's just yeah. that it's a common thing that we see out there and we're spending a lot of time helping people learn how not to do that um yeah. so you know if it does get to that point where let's say maybe you have connected with this person you've gotten to know each other for a few months and the, suddenly a job is posted at that organization they work at you're interested in, then it's easier to go to that person and say, hey, uh, hey, just wanted to follow back up. I know we've been touching and talking lately. Uh, did have a question for you. I saw a job posting at your organization that I'm interested in. I was wondering if you might have any insight or could tell me something about it. Mm. Again, you're asking them for their insight mm. and expertise. You're not asking for them to get you the job. Yes. Uh, they will then hopefully respond and be able to tell you a little bit about the job, what the job requirements are, maybe who you need to talk to, because uh, it, you know, maybe they just have the automatic tracking uh, applicant tracking system. And you don't know who the person is. It's the hiring manager. Maybe yeah. they can help you. So it's not again. We're still not asking for them to give us the job. We're asking for information. We're asking for insight uh, mm -hmm. into that position. And I find the clients that do it that way uh, get way better results. Yeah, yeah, and we're. Two amazing things I think that Al said, and people, like I said, hit that rewind button, listen to this, that example. People don't get this message enough. But number one, you're not you're not doing the direct ask, which I've done before. It's it's it works sometimes, it has its right time and place, but I think this is a lot more effective in terms of getting actual um actually not putting pressure on people and if they want to actually give you those connects and those references, they'll give it to you. And the second thing is Al said is just like you got to put in the time yourself. So he said like after two months, you know, for example, of, of having a genuine connection with somebody and having conversations, um, that's when you go for it. It's not like the day after you meet the guy. So, yeah, I got a client that we talked to, um, earlier this year that was, his company was closing. So the whole company was closing and everybody was going to be out of work and he had this, he really wanted to work for Disney. And he didn't know anybody there at Disney, didn't know anything about him. And he had started to reach out to a few people. And he was asking right out of the gate. I had him send me some of his messages that he had sent to some people at work at Disney. And they were, hey, I'm, uh, my company's going out of business. I need a job. I, I wanted to find out what jobs you have. And it, he didn't even get a response back. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Yeah. So yeah. we had some conversations about how to do this yeah. the right way. And he was able to actually get hired on down there. Uh, and he, it's not the key position he wants, but he got his foot in the door, which was a start. Great. Um, Great. So in an organization like that, getting in the door is definitely a good start. Um, and he's, he's still happy doing what he wants. And he's, he's on track and he's talked internally about how to get to where he wants to with the ideal position. So he has a path of how he's going to get there now. Mm, excellent. One more final question kind of before we close it out here. What do you think is the biggest mistake a job seeker can make who is trying to build their network and why? And um, I even wrote kind of in my, my question notes, it's like, I want you to give advice right now on how somebody can just waste their time right now just doing the networking game so they don't do it. Do not go into uh, LinkedIn, for example, and it has recommended people and just start clicking on every single person that says connect, 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 and you send out like 9,000 connections. Um, actually, you get to a certain point of ones that haven't been answered. Facebook, uh, LinkedIn will actually shut you down and not let you send any more invites ah. if you send too many, because I've had a client do that. <laughs> He's like, I can't invite anybody else. I'm like, well, how many did you send? I go, I don't know. And I had told him how to look it up, and he had like 2,000 invites he had sent out that nobody had answered yet. Uh. Um, so that, and I think about, okay, 2,000 invites. How many yeah. minutes it took to do each one of those? That was a lot of wasted time. Yeah, I, I I don't even feel bad for the people that got you know got the message. I feel bad for the guy for spending yeah. that much time on that. You know. Yep, yep. So we talked about that. So don't go out and get crazy with that. Like I said at the very beginning, it's about the quality of your network. What can you manage? It's about how many people can you honestly connect to, um, follow up with, and respond to. And you know, a hundred, two hundred people in your network. That's plenty if it's the right people. So there's not really an ideal number. It's just what is the network producing for you? Are you finding value in it? Are you spending time on it? Um, the one thing I would say, 
um, is people who don't have any networks on LinkedIn. I, I recommend this, this model to every single person out there. If you want to grow your network and have it produce for you and make this garden of, of people grow for you, spend literally every Monday through Friday. Don't do it on the weekends. So you can make it a business thing Monday through Friday. And I want you to uh, send a minimum of five invites per day. And it only takes about two minutes to send an invite to a targeted person. So I'm only asking for 10 minutes a day. Yep. Monday through Friday. If you can do that, that's potentially 25 people in one week. Yep. That could potentially be 100 connections in 30 days. You could have your network growing for you. Yes. And so many people, I don't have time to do this. I don't have time to do No, no, no. How much time do you spend on Facebook? <laughs> How much time do you spend on Twitter, Instagram? Watching How much your, time do you spend listening to podcasts? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Watching your favorite TV show. I don't know. Like, give give me ten minutes. That's all I'm asking. Yes. Is that, that micro networking, as we'll call it. Okay. Give us ten minutes, five people, Monday through Friday, and you will be amazed how quickly you'll start seeing results in, in your uh, professional relationships. Wow, that is amazing. Just this this idea of introducing micro networking, as you put it, Al, into just our networking game because. Yeah, like let's if we're really trying to be serious about our job search or even if you're not looking for a job, even if you're you're just want to be that well-connected person who is building fruitful relationships that can yield anything, you know, the possibilities are endless. Um, just introduce all these things. So attend those events, you know, send out those requests that are targeted, but don't waste your time sending out way too many of them. And yeah, even even yeah. LinkedIn groups. Like I'm a part of several coaching groups on LinkedIn. And it's all people that are all certified coaches, professionals in their game. Mm -hmm. And you would think, well, why is a coach in a group for coaches with other coaches? Because we share information. We all learn and get amazing content yeah. from each other. Um, so there's tons of benefits from that. Uh, so you, you can't go wrong making those connections, even if it's not about getting a job, even if it's not about finding a job or moving up. Just those genuine human connections and the value of the diversity of thought you get is you can't put a price on it. True. Al, you've been absolutely incredible. Any final words of advice for job seekers? Go out and make it happen. Don't wait till it's too late. Preach. Absolutely. Thanks, Chris. It's been a blast. <laughs> sure. And uh, for those of you um, who are not familiar with Al um, and his his website, his business, Al, actually, I'll have you talk about it. But if you can talk about your career coaching and any potential um, exciting projects that you'll be launching. Absolutely. Uh, so my uh, company is called Career Path Consulting and Development. Uh, we focus on professional coaching, uh, business consulting, and training and development. So uh, we're about to launch an amazing new program uh, for coaching uh, that we're entitled. It's called Coaching Companion Unlimited. And it's a new way of doing coaching. It's focusing on micro coaching and micro learning. Uh, everybody's busy in the traditional hour coaching sessions. A lot of people struggle finding the time for that or it becomes overwhelming. So this new model, we're going to have a flat fee for a full 12 months, and you will get unlimited 15-minute coaching sessions for a full year for one fee that is only about $2,000 for wow. a full year. And you're going to get access to our professional development library uh, that has over 1,000 modules on professional development, everything from how to speak to a C-suite executive to um, resiliency, public speaking, all kinds of amazing topics. That's going to be included for free with that program. Uh, so it's, it's going to be a really amazing. We're launching that uh, at the end of this month. That's awesome. That, wow, that's, that's coming up a lot sooner than I thought. That's excellent. Yep. So, And for those of you listening, it is currently November. So in end of <laughs> November 2018, um, look out for this. This is going to be incredible. I've already heard so much about it, and I keep getting excited myself. So... Perfect. Al, you've been an absolutely oh, incredible thanks. guest. Thank you for joining us again. And I can't wait till the next time we talk, which it'll be very soon. So awesome. Thanks, Chris. Everybody have a great day. All right. You take care.